Help buddy. My name is Eric, and today we're, we're going, we found it. A real one, if you get the reference. All right, it's become such a big deal that if you Google Cheat Lab, oh, pff, you can see how many packets Edge sends. So if you're looking on the second window, if you're wondering what that is, so we can just find this news article. Uh, yes, uh, this is on a major Canadian news site. Uh, apparently police are warning about this because this is targeting, I would say, generally younger users. That's MITM proxy. I've got this set up with a totally stealthy uh, VM. Let me just show that. Where there is no way for the guest... Well, there's a few ways, but in practice, no uh, VM detection is going to figure out what we've got going on here. Uh Got a custom CPU ID, and instead of saying that it's a virtual machine, it thinks that it's not. And it also thinks that the system has virtualization disabled, which makes it even stealthier. But the second trick is MITM proxy, which captures every single packet. This is, in my opinion, I don't know if more powerful than Wireshell is the right word, but this is generally going to produce better results because unlike Wireshell, which by default, uh, the packets are not going to be readable, this will... If you install a special SSL certificate, oh boy, now uh, we can read everything that is being sent. We've completely bypassed the encryption, and we can read uh, every single packet, everything that the system is doing. I have this set up a special way. Oh, I don't want to go on the site. Uh, in order to make it completely uh, indetectable. It says verified publisher Windows, so they've, they've spoofed that. And here we go, we've got the setup, and now we can go down and just see if we hit any uh, packets that might be less than legitimate here. And now Cheat Lab is installing. This is the demo version, so we get this, and now let's see if we got... So you have to share it with three or more people, so that's how it tries to spread. Okay, now immediately we've just hit a paste bin. Now this paste bin... Okay. Uh, so this first paste bin is a redirect, and this one is giving us our command and control servers. So that's how it does that. Then it hits this server, and it hits loader and tasks. Now, to me, this looks like, so I'm just going to go to a base64 decode, and we're going to read what that's actually doing, because that looks like base64. Okay, so it's just giving a set, and these will correspond to tasks. Now, these are not human readable. Uh, that one is the loader. That's going to tell them like where I got this from. And then this is going to tell it what it's supposed to do. And then uh, we hit a few more. So this is okay. And now this is going to hit something else. Now let's... Does this have anything? We can just check if this link is still... It seems like this is just more instructions. Uh, all of these are some sort of uh, codes that will be decoded. Uh, this uh, redline package has a lot of functionality. So this has now been downloaded. And now this is another hit. And this is the data that's been exfiltrated. Now we can decode this and just see, is there anything? It doesn't look human readable. So I guess I'd seen in the McAfee post, it looked like it had a real fake. Oh, okay. Cheat Lab Corp. Cheat Lab. Nope. The only thing that's been left is an exclusion. Uh, this is using PowerShell to exclude. And this is a good way, actually, if you find these, you can figure out where the payload has actually installed itself. And system drive extension. Oh, is that just... <laughs> okay, I think it's just completely killed Windows Defender. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't seem this version did that. Now let's just see if we can... Right, is it possible that it figured out, despite all the cloaking attempts, that it was running on a VM and killed itself early? Uh, okay, no, here we go. So here's where the payload is. Cheat Lab Corp. Cheat Lab Corp. Luigit. So still no sign of anything in program files. Let's check program files. X. No, so did Cheat Lab remove itself? Let's try. Okay, and it's supposed to run the actual payload, which is a stealthy Lua script. But it doesn't seem to do that. History. Okay. So I 
think uh, somehow it figured out what it was running on and decided to hide itself. So we can try, it. one thing we can try and do, uh, because I don't think it's getting that, it's, I, it's either, or it could also be that this executable has some sort of time bomb. So I'm just gonna try installing some programs because that's one way that applications will try to figure out if this is a sandbox or not. Okay, so I've installed some software. I also added something that it might be quite interested in, the Electrum Crypto Wallet. I, I, of course, didn't put any funds in there because I have no doubt the Steeler's going to go for it. And I even have a nice plain text file with my seed in it. So let's see if uh, Cheat Lab is now more willing to operate. So here we go. So let's install Cheat Lab. Uh, some files are currently in use. No. Oh. So maybe a bit of it had survived. Now, so far it hasn't connected to the internet. Okay, now we get the demo version. Now let's see, does Cheat Lab self-destruct? No, it's still, it's still here. The Lua file, which we can open with notepad and just get an idea. Lua is an interpreted language, so, so okay, so yeah, it's essentially just a cloaking technique then. And the Lua jet here is the actual payload. Or we can reboot, because the main way this payload is supposed to be triggered is through a login event, and this also might uh, give it more uh, legitimacy. Okay, and these are just the usual Microsoft services. And then let's see if we get any... Oh! Hmm. Now let's just... Loader. Oh. Okay, those are MSN so far. Now let's see if our Steeler... Let's just see if we get 93, 96. So that was a shorter list. Then we can try... See, because we can actually, we can search. And the Camelna control server seems to be this 80 dot, 80 dot 66 to 81.2. So here is the loader again. And we can see in this one. Oh, and it sent a screenshot on this one. And here is what we, uh, and here is our screenshot. Which of course, is going to be a big. piece of base 64 and of course we can download that we can get this out later so this then triggers the response from the commander control server and it was different this time so we had the otm and the otys so that's the tasks that it now wants to do now let's just see is it self-destructed again or has it uh, remained no it's self-destructed unless it's moved so the main way we can check that is with task scheduler to see, wait a second, notepad update task. Okay. So when did it, when did it create that? Because there's obviously no such thing as a notepad update task. Okay. So now let's find out what's going on in program data. Oh, well, that's clever. So it's removed. Now here is, and here is where Cheat Lab has actually set itself up. And this is the fake Lua interpreter again, and we can trigger this immediately on 12 p.m. So I guess it's designed to wait about an hour before it does anything. And we can see now, does that trigger any more calls to our... Let's just go... Can see, do we... Hitting our... So it doesn't seem to have sent anything to the command control server, and we can double check, and it's still here. It's possible that it's got some sort of... It's, Got some sort of protection against doing what I'm going to do. Now I want to run the really, the hidden payload. Now another good way of telling you something is virus. No legitimate program should name itself like that. So we called cheatlab.lua with the interpreter. This has not triggered any network requests. Now let me just double check how the how this is written. Now, knowing where, what the command and control server is and the kind of file that was sent, we can try and extract it so we can get raw. Okay, so now what we have is what's called a hex editor. Now, what you can do with the hex editor is you can actually edit the raw binary. I'm just going to see uh, let's see what the magic bytes for a bitmap is. Bitmap. Uh, 
BMP file. Okay, it's a 42, so we need to find a 42 and then a 4D. 42, 4D. Okay, so we copy that until, either until we get to the end of the file. Okay, so we've now got the offsets to select a region uh, using the select range tool. We can go from 139 to 128.13 and select that. And if I've done this correctly, I should have now isolated a single bitmap file. And look what we got. So, okay, now it only captures that portion. Now we can try and we can try and do this again. There's only, okay, I'm not really sure why this bit doesn't work, but we've got a general idea of what's going on here. So I hope this was interesting. So it seems that what the thing does first is it sends these screenshots to the uh, Kimona control server, then those screenshots allow the uh, payload to respond. I, I don't know quite how that bit's working to say which things it wants to check, and then those payloads should execute. It seems like a bit of it didn't quite work right, but I think we got a pretty good idea of how, how that system works. There's probably a lot of variants. The one I got was just because it was tricky to find, because the Cheat Lab website has been down for a bit, but luckily Web Archive had a bit of it. So I hope this video was interesting. Please subscribe for more like this, and let me know if you'd like a tutorial on how to set up the network monitoring.